Hello, this is Jason. Back with another walk and talk with Jason. We're going to go this way. I'm not going to cut through the uh, drainage ditch. But we're getting, let's see what time, 620. So we should get to the picnic table in about 45 minutes. The sun should just be below the trees. And should be good timing. <clears throat> And I have noticed that my action cam is not as good as my Pocket 3. It can be adequate in some cases, like right now, where the sunlight is out. A well-lit environment. It does very good. So, indistinguishable from the Pocket 3, really least less noticeable maybe not indistinguishable but when i did my uh steiner ranch steakhouse video the low light performance it's not good i had to boost the uh the brightness up and everything in post which made it like more grainy and then i had to do noise reduction to try to take the grain out and it still didn't look that great <laughs> where the pocket three would have been, it looked like it's daylight. <laughs> it's low light is still much, much better than the action five pro. But for these kind of videos, it's, it's fine. Especially when I'm just using a little corner of it to stick my face in there. Completely, completely adequate enough for a little head cam. <laughs> Although my face would probably be brighter and more noticeable and more beautiful if I did the Pocket 3. We've got, you've already seen what the Pocket 3 looked like when I had two of them. If you're watching the Walk and Talk with Jason channel. So here they put in this new pole. Now, this is a new electric pole. I don't know why. I don't know why they did that. But they did. Got a new electric pole. And that, this is all like concrete spill off or something they're mixing up concrete and it flowed all the way down the road they're a little sloppy them electric company workers so we got a big streak of concrete that'll be there for 10 years going all the way down the sidewalk and down the, the ditch hey doggy and I'm rocking this Climb a Cool shirt from Adidas. I got these slits in the shoulders. And, and I really don't know if these slits are supposed to be there. There's kind of a, a rubber. I think they are. But they were stuck together. And then one popped open and, and I'm like, what? And then I kind of pushed on the other one and it just popped right open. So I guess it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> if not, then it's the weakest bond on a seam on a shirt ever but it's the edges are like coated in like this rubberized material so i can only assume that that's what it's supposed to do so that like the edges aren't going to fray on this so it's all bonded with the rubber so it seems like it's like that it's called climate cool so i guess this is Part of the climate cool system is the shoulders pop open although they don't pop back i thought maybe it would just like reseal back somehow but no it popped open it might not even be supposed to do that 
but I mean it's Adidas shirt, so I guess it's supposed to do that. I'm just gonna go with yeah, because it makes it more more cool. It's a cooling feature. And uh but the last time I wore this shirt I got like chafed under my armpits. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if it still does that. And it's synthetic shirt. I've kind of come to the realization that my merino wool shirts are probably not the best to just do like exercise in and just get sweaty and sweat them up. Like because there is, I've noticed, when I, especially when I was wearing my backpack with it, you get kind of a, I guess they call it pilling. So you get like little balls on the outside of the wool. <laughs> so it's definitely, wool shirts are not as durable as a polyester plastic bag shirt. <laughs> they feel much better, but I, I don't think they're really meant for uh, active wear. But they are like for, I don't know. Let's just say that I'm gonna have to have some polyester plastic bag shirts just to work out and sweat in. Cause I don't wanna ruin my wool shirts. I'll save my wool shirts for just everyday wear. Cause they look nice. I wanna keep them looking nice. I don't want to work them all up, peel them up, wearing like cross bags and backpacks on them. Although I will be doing that in Bangkok, but that's when they're needed. I don't really need them to do that right now. That's what I'm saying. And I did order, like I'm just, wearing my little cheap from Amazon cross bag this thing was 20 bucks or something but I just ordered a oh, what's the name of the country something designs mm, dang it why am I a dummy? It's like pure design. Is that a thing? It's kind of like high end company from Vancouver that makes these really nice bags. And I ordered a 10 liter cross, what do you call these cross bags? shoulder bag not a backpack but get this because this one really doesn't stay put it's hard it's too floppy I don't know if you can even tell in the pocket three that's too floppy I like where my backpack has a more solid foundation where this cross bag kind of wanders down So the other one I got, it's got a nice quick release lock system. You could cinch it up, make it tight. I'm hoping it has like a, it does have points on the bottom. I wanna see if there's a way to connect it like around my waist too, to make it like a three point bag to keep it from migrating. Cause I did have that other cheap three-point bag from China that broke but I liked that kind of mounting system it was more stable With that so that's coming I actually ordered it on eBay I got a good deal it looks like it was used but like brand new and 
that bag cost, I think, look it up, I think it's $189 for just a, like a shoulder bag. And I got it for $76 on eBay doing a snipe. So if you don't use a uh, eBay sniping to try to win auctions at a lower price, then you need to look into that. I use one, it's called Gixen, G-I-X-E-N, or it might be G-I-X-X-E-N, but it's a free website. You sign, sign in with your eBay username, password. You can import your watch list onto it. And then, uh, so things that are, you just put your bid in to the Jixon website and then right like two seconds before the auction ends or one second, it'll place whatever you want to be your like highest bid right at the last second. So the way that saves you money is it avoids getting into bidding wars with other people. So if I, like that bag that I bought had like a day left when I put my bid in on the Jixon site, but it didn't go into eBay until you know one second before the auction ended. And if I would have put it in a day before, you know, I think the bid was at like $72 when I put my bid on Jixon. But if I had put it in on eBay for, I think I put my high bid at like $90. So this was like a $180 bag. But if I had put a bid on at $90, that person would have been, you know, I'd have been winning at $76. That's what I ended up winning the whole auction at. But it would have notified the user Someone outbid you for $76. And if that guy really wanted the bag, he's like, uh, let me go 80. And then I would have increased my bid to 80. Oh, let me go 85. And he might have bid up until he beat my $90 bid that I put in. And then if I wanted a bag, I'd have to bid over 90. And see, that's the kind of bidding war that you can get into on eBay. So if you use a sniper site, you just put in your highest bid, which I put 90. And then the last second, it got me the bag at $76. So I've done that a lot. <clears throat> that and just making offers on eBay. If you see something, it's like buy it now for $100 or make an offer. You don't know how long that item's been sitting there. Like they could have had that item listed for three months and they were willing to, you know, take lower. So I always offer like way lower. Like I bought some shoes, some more Brooks, Brooks Ghost 16s. I bought some GTX ones that are waterproof. I might, those might be the ones I take to, to Bangkok just in case there's some big rains. I need to be out walking in the rain. I can have some waterproof version of some of my favorite shoes. Like right now I'm wearing the, uh, the Ghost. These are the Ghost, Brooks Ghost 14s. So I got the Ghost 16s, but the waterproof version. And I got these ones on eBay too, for like 40 bucks. These are like $140 shoes. So, and they were like brand new. Someone might have tried them on and walked a half mile in them. There was like no signs of wear. I always check the bottoms. Make sure that any shoes you buy on eBay, make sure you look at the bottoms. If the tread's like worn out at all, I wouldn't buy them. I only buy shoes that like you can barely tell that they're even worn when you look at the bottoms. And you know you're getting like practically brand new shoes for good deal. Good deal. 
So that was my eBay, eBaying for today. And I know I, I'm still trying to sell shoes. I really shouldn't be buying more shoes. <laughs> I do have a shoe issue. I did sell a pair though last week. So at least a pair went out before I bought another pair. <laughs> uh, and most of my shoes are just black, black sneakers. <clears throat> my mom says they all look exactly the same, but there are some differences. <sighs> I was just wearing like I've been wearing those uh, Hoka 1-1 Bondi 8s. I've been wearing those for the last couple months. They're holding up great. They are getting some, some wear and tear. But I got those on eBay too for like 40 bucks. Those were like 140, $160 pair of shoes. <clears throat> they're like new. So you can get, you can get great deals on shoes on eBay. Pretty sure I've mentioned it before, but it's worth repeating. Don't be afraid that someone put their foot in a shoe before. <laughs> if it saves you like 70 to 80, 70, 80% off. Totally worth sticking your foot in a shoe someone else took their foot in before. I guess some people are germaphobes that would never do that. Has to be a hermetically sealed clean shoe. I'm not that picky. Oh man. So uh, what else? Oh, I booked my hotel for uh, San Antonio going to San Antonio uh, the end of October not this weekend but next weekend I'm going to be staying like right on the river walk me and uh, I'm going with Misty and Jake and Micah we're going to go to SeaWorld we're going to go to the zoo. We're going to have so much fun. And you cross the road here. And uh, we decided, because I was like looking at hotels and we could either get, you know, like a cheap room at Holiday Inn, like each of us get a room, have our own rooms for like 110 bucks a night, like a Holiday Inn, out kind of outside of the city. You know, not right downtown, but on the outskirts. Or stay right downtown on the river walk, walk out the back door of the hotel, straight into the river walk. And then that was like $306 a night, I think. And it's a, a suite. So it's got like a bedroom and then like a living room area with a couch that folds out into a bed. So they're gonna stay in the, the bedroom and I'm gonna fold out the couch and sleep on the sofa bed. And you know, you don't just really need a nice place to sleep. We're not gonna be hanging out in the room, but the hotel itself is like very nice, you know, nice, restaurants and bars in the hotel and then just walk out the back door and, and very nice pool 
and walk down the stairs and you're right on the river walk so you don't have to be we wanted to do the river walk anyway so might as well stay right on it on it so that'll be fun we're staying two nights friday and saturday and actually i took the day off on friday i'm gonna probably leave at like nine nine or ten in the morning to drive down there it takes about hour an hour and a half to get there maybe two hours depending on traffic and then i guess we're gonna go to the to the zoo on friday and then sea world on saturday and then we'll probably do the river walk stuff dinner down on the river walk both nights since we're staying right there on the river walk Whereas if we weren't staying right on the river walk, might only do it one night. Now, we're right there. It'll be our home. <laughs> so I have some nice places to eat. And beautiful hotel and room. Looking forward to it. Nice little mini weekend, long weekend vacation. Just took one day off work and it was actually i didn't even have to use a, a vacation day it's a floating holiday i work on labor day memorial day and then we get a floating holiday if you work a holiday you get to just take a day off whenever you want so that's what i used one of my floating holidays for and i still have eight days I need to schedule off, which I need to get around to soon because there's I'm running out of weeks to use to take it off. I could use it to take off the week after Thanksgiving just so I don't have to work while I'm in Ohio, but I took the whole week of Thanksgiving off. So that's enough to do any of the stuff during the day. Maybe I'll use a couple days so I don't have to work the whole whole week. Cause I got eight days. I don't think I'm gonna take a whole eight days. I don't know. But I do wanna either go to like Mexico City. I don't know. I'd love to go to Argentina, but for a week's really not long enough, I don't think for a trip to Argentina. And Argentina is, seems like a complicated place to vacation because the the way that they do the money there, like their money is so deflated and there's like two exchange rates. Like if you go there and just buy stuff on a credit card, you get the official exchange rate, which let's say it's a hundred Argentinian pesos to a dollar. I know it's not that, but let's say it's that for easy round numbers. And so if you use credit card, that's the official rate that you get. But if you, if there's people on the streets, you know, it's buying dollars. So it'll be like, I'll give you 200 pesos for a dollar. So you get like double your money if you do these. It's like the black market rate because the government rate is so out of line with reality. It, but you can get the the like black market rate if you Western Union yourself money. So that's one way that people do it. You just send yourself a Western Union from your bank. And then you get the, I forget what they, they call it, like the blue rate or something. That's like the, the black market rate, the unofficial rate. Because it's not really black market. It's not like, well, it might be, no, it's not illegal. Because Western Union wouldn't be doing it if it was illegal. It's just kind of unofficial. You're not going to get it through any official channels. Like if you go into a bank and exchange money, 
you're just gonna get the official government rate. So you gotta figure out where you get the best rates and know what the actual blue rate is instead of the government rate. <coughs> it's tricky. And then I guess you have to pay for everything in cash, which that makes things inconvenient. So it seems like it's a kind of a hassle to vacation in, in Argentina. And it's a hassle just for the people to live there because all, all those citizens are doing that too. Like they can't use their, use a credit card or use dig, digital payment systems because that's all government rate stuff. They have to go get the, the blue rate off the streets <laughs> if they want to get the you know best value for the money. And it's a big difference. It might be like double. I have to look it up. <clears throat> Let's see. See if we can ask ChatGPT about the different rates in Argentina. Hello, what's up? What do you know about the government rate and the unofficial rate of currency exchange in Argentina? In Argentina, there's often a big difference between the official exchange rate set by the government and the unofficial or blue rate, which is used on the black market. The official rate is controlled by the government, but due to economic factors like inflation and currency controls, many people turn to the unofficial market for better rates. This has been a common practice in Argentina during times of economic uncertainty. Are you interested in exchanging money in Argentina? Yeah, what are the different rates? The exact rates can vary, but generally, the official rate is significantly lower than the unofficial blue rate. For example, the official rate might be around 100 pesos per dollar, while the unofficial rate could be 150 pesos per dollar or more. These numbers are just examples and fluctuate frequently due to economic conditions. If you're planning to exchange money, it's essential to stay updated on the current rates. Okay. She said basically what I said. Doesn't have any additional information. Doesn't seem like they have current info anymore. But yeah, I would like to go because you do get a lot of bang for your buck, literally, down there. You get a lot of Argentinian bucks for your American bucks. <clears throat> so, I, I need to make a decision. In Mexico City, while it's cheaper, it might be like 30% cheaper than here, maybe. 30 to 50, depending on what you're talking about. but it's not huge. Whereas Argent Argentina, I think it's probably 50 to 70% cheaper on a lot of things. It's up there with like Bangkok and Vietnam somewhere probably between there. Because Bangkok's about 50% cheaper. Vietnam's like 70% cheaper than Austin, Texas. <sighs> and I was looking at uh, like rooftop bars and places to go in Bangkok. So we got a little list. I've been adding places on the Google Maps to check out. There was a place where they have a all you can drink for it's like $12. 
in Bangkok. <laughs> it's like a, a rooftop bar. It's not the best view rooftop bar, but for 12 bucks. And I think it's all you could drink for like three hours. So you can go, and if it's all you can drink for two hours for nine dollars, 300 baht, 299 baht, and then three hours for 399 baht, which is about 12 bucks. I might do that one night. See how many pints I could chug in three hours. <laughs> Which I can get down quite a few in three hours. Like that piano bar the other night had four or five, I think. <sighs> as long as they got some entertainment, some live music or something. That's kind of places I'm looking forward to checking out. A lot of places with live music. And I thought I left on time to see the sunset, but I think it's already, the sun's going down quicker and quicker every day. And then we're coming up on daylight savings time. I'm gonna be having to leave over an hour earlier than if I want to see the sunset. Sunset will be like five o'clock. <clears throat> really wish they'd get rid of daylight savings time. They always talk about it. Like they're going to do it. I don't think the farmers even care about that anymore. How many farmers are there waking up at four o'clock in the morning? Needs an extra hour of sunlight in the morning. More than I need an extra hour in the evening. <clears throat> And do I even care? <laughs> I'm selfish. I, I always want more hours on the end of the day than the beginning. I'm rarely awake when the sun comes up. But that's just me. What about you? Where would you rather have the extra sunlight at the end of the day? Like me? the beginning of the day, four o'clock in the morning, like a farmer. Look. Getting down here in the busy section. Could use a drink. I don't even see the sun. The sun's already pretty much gone. <clears throat> and then this camera starts to get pretty dark when the sun is gone. <sighs> do, do, do. And in other news, Bitcoin, can't go a video without talking about Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin is starting to spike. And they're saying it's because China's pretty much flooding, flooding their economy with dollars. I don't know how they're doing that, but they're just talking about increased global liquidity due to something that China is doing. That's what this latest bump is supposed to be. 
and Bitcoin was below 60,000 just I think less than a week ago and now it's hit over 65,000 which is like uh I don't know what that is in percentage terms five five percent six seven it's not huge yet but it's moving in the right direction the all-time high is around 72 73 I forget what number exactly but it's in that range and that was just last May maybe March April May somewhere in there it was earlier this year right before the halving <sighs> So, hold on to your butts. Hopefully I'm gonna see that 4X, 5X by next October, November. And if I do, then my house price should be going up by a lot by then too. And that'll be when Put in my two weeks notice work and say i am off to see the world bye bye <laughs> so cross my fingers see if that happens and i mean even if I still would expect it to go to at least like 140. I'd expect it to double, which that might not be enough for quit your job and leave money. Well, I guess it really depends on how much I can get from my house. So that's a variable that I don't know. And you know how much I have to pay real estate agents and you know how much they're gonna take out of me during closing even though my house is worth five hundred thousand I might only get four hundred fifty thousand I know they take a pretty big chunk but I don't know what that was Message, Let's see. Mm. And someone messaging about some shirts that I have for sale. Yes, please. Please come buy my shirts on my Duluth trading. I listed like 40 shirts on Facebook Marketplace. I would like to sell as many of those as I can. I, and I have probably 20 or 40 more to list. That was just the first wave I got burned out on listing them. <sighs> I need to list more stuff too. Need to stay vigilant. And I'm back on my fast. Day one again. Week, week four. Day one. And I'll make it till Friday around 11 a.m. this time. I actually broke the fast on Thursday this past week because I had a uh, scheduled meeting with friends after work and I wanted to drink beers and I didn't think that I should drink beers if I didn't eat some food like drinking on after not eating for four days probably not the best <laughs> so I ate some I ate some greasy 
fish and chips. That's what I broke my four day fast with. And it actually didn't feel too good. <laughs> it's a little too greasy for breaking a fast that I didn't eat almost all day on Friday. And then ate when I went to uh, Steiner Ranch and had that steak. So I didn't really overdo it over the weekend. And besides that, well, I had french fries, I had the baked potato. I did have some carb, carby things. So, but I'm still down. Even after eating over the weekend, I got up to, I think, 270. Where I, as I started this at 289. So I'm still 19 pounds down, even after refeeding. And then when I stop eating, by the time, like, the day before, I think 263 was the lowest I got down to. That's being empty, my empty weight. And then, so it's like seven pounds difference between being empty and being refed. looking at 43 we got about two more minutes unless I'm just walking slow oh no no that normally takes me 45 minutes but I took the long way today if I had to cut through the uh, the little gutter I get here in 45 minutes but I went the long way might add an extra I think it's an extra Tenth of a mile, maybe. So how long does it take to walk a tenth of a mile? If I walk like 18 minute mile paces, I don't know, an extra minute or two. All right. So, does anybody out there have any uh, vacation spot locations? It would be good to spend a week week of vacation around this time of year. Actually between now and Thanksgiving. That's when I need to get it done. So I'll be two weeks in Ohio, Thanksgiving week, the week after. And then I think there's only like one week in between that and me going to Bangkok. So, and I've only got like three or four weeks from now until Thanksgiving. So it's getting crunch time. I gotta get something booked. I gotta go somewhere. If I don't use it, I lose it. My vacation time does not roll over. <clears throat> so I would much rather go somewhere and do something than to donate that time back to my company I'm sure they would like that <clears throat> and it's like eight days too I wonder if I could squeeze out another two and try to get two weeks somewhere might be able to might be able to squeeze another day in there. <sighs> well, well, well. This, I think this is it. 
coming up on the park. It got a lot darker than I expected leaving it as early as I did. I'm gonna have to start leaving at like 5.30. You'll see the sunset. Chasing sunsets, man, chasing sunsets. Dogs playing out here. It's going to work out. I'll walk around so I don't walk through the dog run path. Dogs getting a workout. Yeah, there's no no sun here. It's been 50, 50 minutes. So it's an extra five minute, 50 minutes, 30 seconds. So it'll be 51 minutes, extra six minutes walking the long way. And I might not have been walking as fast. It was 2.83 miles. Yeah, I don't think I was walking at a, as fast of a pace as I could either. Oh. Oh. Well, yes, we'll wind it down here. Not much to see, it's already getting late. My, I did bring my headlamp, so walking back through the dark woods will I'll be able to light the way. That's all I got. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. And uh, I will see you next time. So talk to you later, take it easy.